Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. If you're looking for a bit more control over your WAN video generations, then Time to Move may be just the thing for you. Here you can see a few of their examples of poor quality rotoscoping getting turned into something slightly better. They provide lots of different ideas for things like camera motion control, as well as appearance control, so let's get into it. You can use this at home on your own computer thanks to Comfy UI, and for those familiar with the channel, you'll know I like to follow the way of the nerd and use the rodent method for my workflows. This means putting things neatly into colourful little boxes. Why would I do that? Well, I think it makes things both easier to follow and also easier to update. If you're looking to neaten things up yourself, then don't forget you can pause or rewatch the video at any time to see what's going on. Also, if you find these videos helpful, or perhaps you'd just like all the work done for you already, then you can support the channel via the Patreon link in the video description. Your support helps me make even more workflows for you and to share these videos with everyone. The freedom to choose is of course yours, and a great big thank you to all supporters, because you make this possible. Ok, let's get into the workflow then. This one is pretty quick and easy because for the most part it's simply the WAN 2.2 workflow I've already done a video on. If you're looking for the slower and more detailed breakdown of what's going on here, then do check out the previous video. As this one is just about time to move, this workflow focuses on the image to video models only, and here they are in the loader. Nothing new here, we've got the high model there and the low one there. Then of course the block swap and LoRa's. The LoRa's we're loading this time are the I to V ones. Once again, it's the light X to V to give us those fast videos with few steps. Don't forget, of course, you can vary the strengths on these. 2.5 I found was pretty decent, but you could also go up to three or maybe down to one. Just have a play and see what works best for you. Torch Compile and Block Swap are here as usual, and I've made some notes in this little group from NVIDIA SMI about the sorts of VRAM usage you can expect to see. If you've got Block Swap set to 1, then that's all the way up to around 24 gig of VRAM. It is, of course, the fastest way to generate things, but if you've got even less VRAM, you can increase that Blocks to Swap, and at 20, you're looking at around 16 gig of VRAM, and Blocks to Swap all the way up to 40 is around 9.8 gig. So hopefully, something there for most graphics cards. For this first example, I'm using their default positive prompt and default assets as well, so it's going to be the jumping monkey. It's specifically asking for bed creases, so you may like to follow this structure too by asking about little tiny details like that when you're doing your own videos. If you want to grab the same assets, then you can get those from the GitHub, which we can see down here. So section two, I've got the time to move option here. There is the jumping monkey. It's very badly rotoscoped. And of course, there's no creases on the bed there. But yeah, little monkey jumping across. The other thing this one needs is a mask of that cutout, which you can load here in the second video input. What goes on next? Well, it's pretty straightforward, really, and there's actually only one new node to deal with, that one there. So first of all, we take the video frame up here, that first video frame, and we resize that. Now, this gives you the control over the final video generation size, in this case, 832 by 480. Here you can see then the input video gets resized and also the mask video as well. Those two inputs are encoded, so you've got the video there and the mask there going into our new node, the WAN video add TTM latents. The rest of the workflow is just what we've seen before with the six step two sampler setup for the high and low models. Being six steps, it's also nice and quick, meaning no waiting for ages to get your video. Jump, monkey, jump. Here he is then bouncing around on the bed, so you've gone from that really bad rotoscoped video to start with to an actual monkey jumping on the bed with little creases and indents and bouncing and all that sort of stuff. So yes, very much improved from the original input. Now, the thing here is you'll need to make these control videos yourself, which I just did in a standard video editor. If you don't have one, then there are things such as Shotcut or DaVinci Resolve, which you can download and use for free. This is my first attempt at a badly rotoscoped video where I basically cut out the boat 
and then moved it down the river. It obviously leaves a big hole there where the boat used to be, but that's the magic of time to move in that it will do the in-painting for you. Super cool stuff. The mask video is here and it's basically the same video, but I build in the roto with white. Quite an easy way to do the masking. For the prompt, I just did this. So we've got a boat moves slowly through the water, water lapping up against the sides, its wake extending behind it, leaving ripples in the water as the boat continues its journey. I wasn't sure how well my first attempt would do, so let's take a look. OK, so I've got a strange bit of rope coming out the front there, but otherwise it's pretty decent, I think. The water is moving and that boat-shaped hole seems to have been filled with the mist already present in the image. Fair enough. OK, time for another test then, I guess. This time the video I made was of a statue in the desert raising its hand. Of course the rotoscoping is exceptionally poor quality and we've got that arm shaped hole as I move it up. A quick look at the mask as well just so you can see what that looks like. And this is what I have for the prompt. An ancient statue in the stormy desert slowly lifts its hand, moving vortices of shifting sands as its body slowly starts to glow with pulsing mystical powers and its eyes open. The sand blows gently from an unseen wind. How well do you reckon it will do with that? Well, I really liked the result on this one. It sorted out the proportions on the robe. The sand is blowing nicely across the desert. And if you take a look there, the statue even opens its eyes. Totes happy with that result, especially considering the poor quality of my original animation. Time to get even more complex then. And this time I've got this knight jumping off its pedestal with some super low quality animation and bending just for giggles. Like you can see in the mask, it does have some pretty terrible distortions. For the prompt, I went with a magical wooden knight chess piece, jumps down off its moss-coloured stone pedestal, and then moves slowly before pausing to quickly lift its head high once, as if to give a majestic but silent neigh or whinny. Once again, not bad at all, all things considered. The jump is pretty good and perhaps I don't really have the whinny I was hoping for, but then I was trying to see just exactly how much control I could get away with. Either way, it's better than the video I started with. Now, the other thing I tested this time as well was the plain old image to video as well, which is up here, starting with that same first frame. This is just the standard image to video flow. Thoughts on how well it will do this time without the time to move latents? Well, interestingly enough, this time the video has focused more on the Winnie, which is great, but it's zooming in and it didn't jump down off the stone to start with, thus showing that time to move does indeed give you that little bit of extra control. Being WAN 2.2, you're not limited to just 480p, so this time I went up to 1024 by 576 using the same night video and prompt as before. As you'd expect, the video is still very good. A nice little jump from the horse there down off its stone and perhaps maybe even following the masking a little better than before as well, maybe? For the plain image to video result, this one has also done a little better. We've got the knight actually jumping down this time and it charges towards the camera. So perhaps following the prompt a little better with the higher resolution. Now, whichever method you prefer, I think, Time to move is certainly a handy extra tool to have in your toolbox. And if you like getting all nerdy with workflow details and stuff, then don't forget to like and subscribe for even more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Ooh, Nerdy Rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.